I will start with importing the data set. This is a CTG data set. So I just import it. So you can see there are 2126 observations with 22 variables. And the last variable, which is NSP, assumes three values, one, two, and three. So this is a classification based on medical experts where one means normal, two means suspect, and three means pathologic. The remaining 21 variables are features using which we are trying to predict the response variable NSP, which is a categorical variable. So instead of this uh, long name, I'm going to change it to, let's say my data. So once I run this, now onwards it will call my data. If I look at the structure of this data set, you can see all 22 variables are listed. Uh, first 21 are features, some of them integers and some of them numerical variables. Last one is supposed to be a categorical variable, but R reads them as integers because they are 1, 2 and 3. So we need to convert this into factors. So we can do that for my data, we create a new variable. Let's call this NSP F for factor. So my data in that file variable called NSP. So that will be converted to a factor or categorical variable. Another thing we need to do before we can do multinomial logistic regression is because we have three levels for the response variable NSP, we have to identify a reference level. So we are going to use one as a reference level. So one will mean normal patient. So we use re-level function. We specify the response variable, and then our reference is one. So now we are ready to develop multinomial logistic regression model for which we are going to use a package nnet. nnet stands for neural networks. So this package is already installed. So I'm just going to call this using this library. And now I can make my model. So let's call my model as my model, multi and om for multinomial. The variable or the response variable is out. out. So that's the output that we have defined. And for this illustration, uh, we'll use just first three variables, lb, ac, and fm. And our data file is my data. So you'll see that it starts with some very high error. And then after 10 iterations, it reduces to 1200 from 2300 and then 1000. And finally, it converges to a lower value. We can look at this model using summary command. So summary my model. So what you see here is these are coefficients. Two means second level. Remember one is the reference level. So two is referring to suspect and three is pathologic. For two, you have intercept as negative 16.21 and so on. And the first coefficient is for LB is 0 0.11, which is positive. For AC, it is negative. Deviance is the error left over in the model. So this is uh, similar to what we have in linear regression called sum of squares due to error. Obviously, when we develop a model, we want this to be as low as possible. Apart from coefficients, you also have standard errors for the two situations. Using the coefficients, uh, we can write this equation log of probability of 2 divided by probability of 1 where 1 is the reference is equal to the intercept which is negative 16.218 plus 0 0.11 approximately 3 LB minus 829.162 AC plus 6.137 FM. So basically probability of 2 divided by probability of 1. So related to a normal patient, the probability of a suspect patient is given by P2 by P1. We can also call that as odds. And then 
when you have log here we get what is called log odds when you have a positive coefficients like for lb we have a positive coefficient of 0.113 so positive means the feature lb has a positive impact on log odds of probability of a patient being suspect versus probability of a patient being normal whereas feature ac it has a negative impact on the log odds because the coefficient of ac is negative 829.162 now in the same manner we can write a second equation so interpretation of this equation is same as what we did earlier so now we are looking at log odds of patient being pathologic versus a patient being normal we can use these two equation to calculate individual probabilities let's call first equation as y1 and second equation as y2 so instead of writing this whole equation we'll just use y1 and then if we take exponential on both sides what we get is probability of 2 by probability of 1 equals e to the power of y1 similarly if you look at the second equation and take exponential on both sides we get probability of 3 by probability of 1 as e y2 you can combine these two and what we get is probability of 2 plus probability of 3 divided by probability of 1 equals e y1 plus e y2 and we know that probability of 1 plus probability of 2 plus probability of 3 so the total probability always equals 1 so because of that we can rewrite the above equation as 1 minus p1 by p1 so this becomes 1 by p1 minus 1 so if you take minus 1 on the other side you get plus 1 so 1 plus e y1 plus e y2 so if you take reciprocal of both sides we get p1 equals 1 by 1 plus e y1 plus e y2 so this is how we can calculate probability that the patient will be normal p of 1 so once we have this we can replace this here and we can get probability of 2 which is probability of a patient being suspect so that will give us similarly probability that a patient will be pathologic becomes once we have the right coefficients and once we have conducted the two tailed z test and we know that which features are significant so we can retain them and remove the features that are not statistically significant and then find out y1 and y2 and then use them for calculating these three probabilities we can calculate these probabilities very easily in r by using predict command so we can predict using my model so if you simply say my data it will make a prediction in terms of the outcome variable for all 2126 observations or patients so if i do this you will see that you see lot of one twos and threes so basically model predicts first patient to be normal because this is one the model predicts second patient to be normal again and so on if you look at the second row this is for 39 patient so 39 patient also is expected to be normal 77th patient is expected to be suspect so this is how we get the predictions if you compare for example this with actual data so if you look at the first patient medical experts have classified first patient to be suspect so that's why we have a value of 2 but in our prediction we have seen that the model predicts that this patient is normal because this is one so obviously there is a misclassification for the first patient but for the second patient you can see medical experts have classified that patient as normal and our model also says that the patient is estimated to be normal 
so that way there is a good match now if you want to make a prediction of probabilities we can add type equals p r o b where p r o b is nothing but probability so what you see now is for every patient there are three probabilities which are given here for example for the last patient probability that the patient will be normal is 0.77 so there is a 77% chance of patient being normal so obviously that is the highest for this patient so we will predict that this patient is going to be normal when you add the three probabilities obviously you'll get one so calculation of probabilities using the model is very easy to do in r if you want to specify that i want the prediction of probabilities only for some specific patients what you can do is you can insert this bracket c and within parentheses you can mention that suppose we want to predict probabilities for the third patient 100 patient and 400 patient and then after this parenthesis we put a comma and then if we run this line we get predictions of probabilities only for those three patients so for example third patient has a probability of 0.96 or there's a 96% chance that the third patient is likely to be normal. So we can compare predictions of the model with the actual data and see how often the match is not there or there is a misclassification. Let's say we want to develop our confusion matrix CM and we are going to make a table which includes predictions from my model and then our data my data we are comparing with nspf which is the response so we run this which will store the confusion matrix in cm and then we can simply print cm so we run this and we get this matrix so these one two three those values are the actual values and those are the classification by medical experts where they have said one means normal Two means suspect and three means pathologic these one two and threes on the left side they represent prediction from the model so these are experts and this is based on the logistic regression model so you can see 1592 patients were classified as normal by the medical experts and the model also says that 1592 are expected to be normal but there were 61 patients who were classified as normal by the medical experts but the model says that they belong to the second category which means that these 61 patients are suspect similarly these two patients are predicted to be pathologic by the model but in reality they were normal you can see the numbers that are on the diagonal that's the correct classification and off diagonal numbers are incorrect classification so using this data if you add 165 plus 137 plus 27 plus 2 plus 2 and plus 61 and divide that by the total like 2126 so that percentage is going to be 0.185 so the misclassification percentage is about 18.5 percent so 18.5 percent of the time the model misclassifies a patient if you run this line where we are using this summary my model coefficients divided by my model standard errors using that we can do a two-tailed z-test so let's run this so you can see the coefficient for lb has a p-value of almost zero when the p-value is small obviously the confidence level is high because confidence level is 1 minus this number so the confidence level is close to 100 percent that this variable is playing a significant role so remember 1 is the reference level which is the normal and 3 is pathologic so for lb and 3 you have a p value of 0.46 so when you do 1 minus 0 0.46 it's 0 0.54 so confidence level would be about 54 percent obviously that's too small we look for like 90 percent or 95 percent or 99 percent confidence so that means lb doesn't have significant contribution 
in the model when one is reference and when we are looking at third level for the response. For AC, both P values are small. So obviously AC is significant. And also for FM, you have like 4.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So you have 0 followed by 3 zeros and then 4, etc. So that's also very small P value. So confidence level is high that these coefficients are significant. In fact, in this case, we can use all three because they are significant either for both or at least for one.